Have you lost your sense of smell after contracting COVID-19? This is a very common situation. We are noticing that some people do not gain their smell and taste back for a long time, and some people even uh, got months and even one year. The other issue is that there is change that can happen to your taste and smell and you start smelling things differently and tasting things differently and lots of time it can be very unpleasant taste and smell. So what can we do about that? How can we treat long-term smell loss and changes in the smell and the paranosmia? So how can you treat the long-term smell loss and how can we deal with those paranosmia with changes in the taste and smell that can happen after COVID-19? I'm Dr. Omar Dannoun, a neurologist that is specialized in post-COVID-19 neurological complication and I'm running the neurology clinic after COVID-19 and I will tell you my own experience and what uh, we have so far from the research and the literature, how can we treat those sometimes difficult cases. So recently, in my own experience in my post-COVID neurology clinic, uh, reading lots of uh, your comments on the previous videos that we, when we talked about the how to restore your sense of smell and taste, we noticed that there is a lot, there are lots of people that can have the loss of smell and taste linger for longer than usual. The good news is that 90% of the people who contract COVID-19, their smell and taste will recover either spontaneously or with some treatment. However, there is about 10% of people, their smell and taste can linger for longer time. And those people we need special treatment for, and this is what we are going to discuss today. And the other very annoying issue is that the change in smell and taste. So let's talk about this issue. So when the smell is lost, sometimes the inflammation and infection is a little bit more than usual, and there will be inflammation and destruction of the uh, polyps and the nasal uh, uh, passages that can cause destruction and sometimes it can be permanent or major destruction that takes long time to recover and that will lead to problems in the nerve on the long run and some people will re, uh, have a long-term smell loss. Another major issue in the smell uh, changes is the paranosmia and paranosmia is a condition when you change the way you smell things. For example, so you smell a rose or, or a flower or, or you taste uh, something that used to be pleasant to you and now the smell changes and become unpleasant or there is something different changes. Some people mention that they smell things like metallic taste or smell, they smell like very unpleasant petroleum, sulfur, or like very disgusting and, and bad smell. And this is really annoying and sometimes it can last for a long time and people will become aversive to food. Uh, for example, I can relate to myself, like because I have a, con a condition like where I do not like the, the taste of cilantro. To me, it looks like very weird. So I love guacamole, but I could not enjoy it if it has cilantro in it. So every time you eat that, it's kind of like has very, very unpleasant. So I can relate to like, how can you like deal with that on in daily basis that you have like this bad taste and smell with everything you eat. So. I totally understand what you're going through and that's why I'm trying to do this video to help you with what you're dealing with. I'd like to take a second to tell you about my mission and why I'm making those videos. So my mission and goal is to reach people uh, like you who need medical information and you want to take those medical information from the reliable source of doctors who can speak your language. You know, like I see people are like either they're patients who have their own experience, which is usually like limited and simple, or they have like doctors who talk in very complex words that you could not understand them. Uh, so if you really like what I do here, uh, you can support my channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing that my content to other people so that it will grow and, and, my, and will reach more people like you so that my other people will benefit. So, Sometime when there is an infection, there will be destruction of the supportive cell that uh, take care of the nerves and sometimes the, the infection can affect the nerves themselves. So that will lead to destruction that takes sometimes long time to recover, sometimes takes weeks, sometimes takes months or even years. Uh, to recover completely. So we uh, need to keep supporting the nerve cells until they recover. Uh, 
And here is the treatment that we can do to support the nerve cell and help them to recover and help the brain to recognize those new senses and make it into the uh, right pieces of the puzzle. One study noted that there is an ongoing inflammation and some parts of the virus or the virus itself was isolated in those people who have a long-term smell loss. So maybe there is an ongoing inflammation and that can be dealt with um, on its own. So it is important to keep understanding why this happens so that we can get better and at treating it. Some people will recover from their loss of smell and the smell will not come back 100%. So I had patients who they will uh, get their smell back but it's not all the way so they used to like smell things from far away or like really dissect like what what taste and smell this thing is and now they're not as quiet reaching that point and hopefully that with time and training things will improve for them all right what is the treatment for the long-term uh, smell loss and anosmia there is a lot of research going on into answering this question and there was a consensus statement put by all the doctors who treat the loss of smell internationally and the most important recommendation was first is the olfactory training we talked about before uh, doing olfactory training with home recipe so you can check that out i'll link it in the cards and put down in the description and you can do that if you have lot uh, long-term uh, smell loss i advise you to use essential oils which will usually give you better results than things that you use at home and this course of treatment it needs to be consistent you do it twice a day for three months and then we will reevaluate. and you should use specific essential oils the first course will be rose eucalyptus cloves and lemon those are important essential oils you use them every day twice a day and then the the way to do that you open the jar smell it for 20 to 20 to 30 seconds and then give your uh, nose uh, a chance of one minute to recover and then use the second jar until the the end and do that every day in the morning and at night twice a day faithfully every day for three months and then when you start getting some response usually the first time you try to smell it you will not smell anything and then after that you start slowly getting some smell back and the reason why we do the olfactory training is to train the brain on the getting the signals back to your brain so that starts to kind of program itself again to make the connection between the nose and the brain to organize it and get your smell back and then if there is no recovery after three months you will go to the next set of uh, essential oil uh, and you will go to the menthol, thyme, tangerine and jasmine and you will do that again for three months every day in the morning and at night and then if that does not work you will go to the third set of essential oils and you will use green tea, bergamot, rosemary and gardenia and those essential oils will stay for three months and as you can see the treatment takes long time it took three months and then change the second set to the three months and change the second set to three months. So it's kind of like takes nine months. So you have to be patient and consistent and perseverant and do it every day for three months and then three months and then three months. And hopefully after all of that perseverance, you will get your taste and smell back. Another thing that really can help is if you do smoke, it is highly recommended to stop smoking and that will help to recover the, uh, the support cell and the nerve cells, which gives you a good recovery. And then if you do have any sinus issues, means like you have runny nose with uh, mucus if you have tenderness on the sinuses or if you have a uh, nasal discharge then you might be having acute infection of sinusitis so you need to visit an ear nose and throat doctor to check you out and and make sure that you do not have the sinusitis infection and treat that treat that if it is there and that treatment will really help to provide a healing recovery environment that will improve your recovery. And sometimes maybe that is the reason why you're not getting your smell back. And also, I would like to discuss a specific subject of steroids. So steroids are medications that are given to decrease the inflammation in the body. 
and it has been used a lot in patients with COVID-19. However, we should be very careful in which patient we should give steroids to because steroids have lots of side effects and they're not for everybody and they should not be given for a long time. So steroids sometimes can help and it has been shown in clinical trials and studies that steroids can help either locally or orally, which we call systematic use of steroids like dexamethasone or prednisone, and those can decrease inflammation and help recovery. However, do not take steroids in the acute state of infection, unless you are really like in the ICU and that is like your doctors will decide that. But if you are in, in the first two weeks, do not take steroids because it can decrease the immune system response and that can worsen recovery. And steroids should be given for a short time period. And you should not take steroids if you have diabetes because it can really like worsen your diabetes or it can worsen your hypertension. So do not take steroids on your own. Always consult with your doctor before starting steroids. I know like I've read lots of comments like, oh, I took dexamethasone, it helped me like a miracle. Yeah, it can help, but you know, you have to really know that a steroid is right for you. So do not use it without uh, consulting your doctor. And then, there are other treatments that are either experimental or like used anecdotally. And one of the things that showed some benefit is like vitamin A nasal drops. It, it had showed some improvement and does not have like uh, any uh, significant side effects to it. So maybe you want to try that, but always consult with your doctor before doing so. And it is important to know that um, COVID-19 can be the cause of loss of smell. However, there are lots of other causes that can be sometimes uh, causing your loss of smell. So you should be evaluated by a doctor to make sure that you do not have those other symptoms that are a sign of other disease than COVID-19. And there are sometimes like very bizarre stories of people like going to chiropractors and like flickering their head and touching their tongue and touching their like forehead and like heart and all of those. So I, I, I think those like they work on a specific uh, concept of like suggestion and placebo effect. If you believe that this is going to help you, it's likely will help you, but I'm not sure, like there is no any scientific background to kind of like approve that this is gonna work for you. So you can do that all day long in your house, uh, but I don't recommend you go to like uh, somebody to like pay the money to flick your head because you know, like I don't think that's very ethical to do because there is no proof that it's gonna work. And very important, make sure to get protected from COVID-19 by getting the COVID vaccine and applying all the protective measures so that you do not contract the virus from the beginning you can watch this video to learn more about the vaccine and if you if the vaccine is right for you and thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video